Uh, my name is Frank Mason. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at Vanderbilt University Medical Center here in Nashville. Yeah, so um, the original proposal I wrote for the KCA Young Investigator Award was based around um, some work that we had been doing um, studying this uh, loss of this tumor suppressor called SETI2 that's very frequently mutated in kidney cancer. And we've been trying to identify um, compounds and uh, that were synthetically lethal with SETI2 loss, meaning that when uh, cells have or tumors have SETI2 mutations, they're more sensitive to certain drugs. And we identified this um, interaction and that was the basis for the um, proposal to try to figure out why these cells are more sensitive and uh, whether it could potentially lead to uh, uh, in patients you know, down the line. Um, and the grant was critical because we <laughs> uh, eventually um, found out that it wasn't, we weren't able to recapitulate the data um, in patient samples uh, and, and human uh, cells, but it turns out that uric acid blocks the efficacy of this drug, and that explains why it wasn't working, but it's really uh, an important finding for us, and I think for broader uh, implications for people who study chemotherapeutics and cancer therapeutics, is that a lot of the um, uh, you know, experiments that we do in a dish aren't necessarily the same as in humans or even in mice for that matter. And so this drug that had been really effective in preclinical models, so in cells in a dish, but also in mouse models, wasn't working in humans. And it turns out that it's because of this waste product. But it took us a lot of work to figure that out. But I think also during that time, what we were able to understand is from, you know, from some of our preliminary data from this, from the, the that we generated with the grant, we identified like this other, um, parallel process that was going on in the cells that led to a publication that we just had in PNAS that came out a couple months ago. Um, and what we found is uh, we were in the process of trying to understand why this small molecule was killing cells that lacked SETI2. We were we had initially hypothesized that it was something to do with the DNA. And so we isolated DNA from these cells and we found out that while the small molecule wasn't affecting the DNA, the cells that have SETI2 mutations have crazy DNA rearrangements that led us to kind of go down this whole other path and uncover this kind of new biology that we've been studying. And I put in a, another DOD grant uh, based off of that finding uh, this past September. At the time, I was um, uh, an assistant research professor, research assistant professor, I should say. Um, and uh, because I got this KCA grant, which led to a DOD grant, then I, in the past year, have transitioned to a tenure track faculty position. So, which again was kind of the, uh, the grant was a springboard for that. Yeah. I, I think the thing that I didn't necessarily anticipate when I applied for the grant, but has been absolutely true, is that um, I found it incredibly helpful to then be uh, using this as a way to become part of the community, to integrate yourself into being a kidney cancer researcher, which I wasn't when I, when I started. We were kind of studying basic cell biological processes around this gene. And, um, you know, being a part of the KCA has now kind of integrated me with kidney cancer researchers. I mean, I've been working with Kim Rathmull for a, a, a several years, but I was a cell biologist that was working in Kim Rathmull's lab. And now I've been going to kidney cancer meetings for years and uh, being able to you know, go to the meeting today and see familiar faces and talk to them about my work, their work, and kind of catching up. And, and, and so I think for anybody who's early career trying to establish themselves, these kind of uh, young investigator or private foundation advocacy, advocacy group grants are essential to, um, uh, you know, introducing yourself to the to to a community, um, but also um, you know, kind of as, as establishing yourself as a you know somebody who's kind of burgeoning in the field. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the, um, so when I started at Vanderbilt, our lab is in the cancer center. And so every day I would walk through the cancer center to get to lab. And you, you really appreciate the responsibility that you have. This isn't just a job, right? You're trying to help patients. And I think um, 
um, you know, being able to kind of keep that front of mind and understand like what the real goal is, uh, is, is really important. And, you know, um, I think meetings like this also are extremely important for me as a basic scientist to see what are the things that clinicians are thinking about, what are the things that patients are having to go through, um, and, and the work that still needs to be done. And I think um, like, that is really um, exciting to think about what, what opportunities there are uh, that still exist, um, but also kind of keeping top of mind that there is still a, a long way to go, a lot of work to be done. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the the funding was essential to kind of, you know, uh, like the, the first step uh, into building my own uh, independent research group. Um, but the other thing I will say that I, I also found uh, really um, helpful as a, being a part of this community now is I was able to um, review grants for the most recent um, cycle. And so being on the other side of the grant process is also very illuminating and helpful for somebody that's actively trying to get more funding. So I think um, I think the combination of being a part of the kidney cancer community and then also, you know, starting to kind of learn more professional skills that are helping me has been really uh, exciting, yeah.